Good morning, grade four. Miss Oni here. I hope you are all ready, guys, into this lesson. We are now in chapter eight, lesson two. So sit back and I will take you through early history of the Midwest. So let's start the lesson with the learning objectives. So number one, to describe Native Americans of the Midwest ways of life. So we will find out about their customs, their traditions, or a typical way in which this group of people lives. And number two, we will describe the exploration and settlement of the region. So here we will find out the challenges of the explorers or settlers, and we will find out as well what were the agreement done in resolving guys the problem or conflict of the region. But before we proceed, let's have a quick recap of lesson one, which was about the geography of the Midwest. So we've learned that the Midwest is a region of lakes, prairies, and farms. So now let's see how much you've remembered from the previous lesson. So we have two questions here, and it's very simple. Okay, number one, farmers grow corn on the blank and wheat on the blank. So we're talking about here kinds of planes and pictures for you to have some clues. And number two, what are the two extreme weather in the Midwest? I guess, guess the picture is very obvious, isn't it? Okay, so what do you think are the answers? So let's start with number one. So farmers grow corn guys in the central plains and wheat on the Great Plains. So here, central plains, they have more fertile soil. It is wetter. And this one is kind of drier or dry soil compared with the central plains. And here we're talking about tornadoes and droughts. So I hope you all got it correct. And I hope you will remember guys the concept of lesson one. And now let's explore, let's discover more about the early people of the United States. So long ago, millions of buffaloes roam around the entire plains. And for Native Americans, grade four, buffalo was one of the important natural resources. Okay, so when you say, by the way, Native Americans, so these were the people who were first guys to live in America. Actually, they are also called Native Americans or American Indians. And since we're talking about early people, so let me introduce to you these people from the Midwest. And they are called the Sioux, okay, or Sioux. So this is a pronunciation since this is American French word. So as I've said, they were one of the many Native American groups in the Midwest. And this is how they look like, guys. All right, so interesting, isn't it? So let's find out more about these people. All right, so actually they live in villages along with the rivers and lakes of the Central Plains. So there, they fished the waters and hunted the forest, and some also learn about farming activities. But since European settlers came to look to this area or to the Central Plains, so these people, the Lakota and many other Sioux guys, tribes moved west to the Central Plains. So as I've said, so a lot of European settlers or explorers guys wanted to control their area. So these native people had to move from one place to another place for them to survive and make a living. Okay, let's see here. So there, they have to adapt themselves. So when you see adapt, it is something or a change the way of life or to survive in the new environment. So the same thing we for when we arrive or when we travel in a certain place, right? So what do you do to get along with people? So what do we do to survive in a certain place? So simple, we observe and then we see how people live and in the end of the day, we adjust ourselves to a certain place, right? So this one is the Great Plains. Actually, there are a few rivers in the Great Plains. So the Sioux could no longer guys use their canoes to travel. So this is called the canoes or the canoe. So this one is used guys for, aside from traveling, they are also used these guys, of course, 
to hunt their food or to hunt something to eat and even to do some trading from other people or to other people. Okay, and then because of this, these native people learn how to capture horses and even learn how to ride on horses. And by the way, horses before were first brought to the Americans by the European explorers. And now here is a buffalo. Have you seen one for real? This is huge, guys, right? So let's find out about buffalo. So the Sioux, as I've said, moved from one place to another place following the herds, guys, of buffalo. So that's the real reason that they didn't have or didn't build their permanent villages or farms. So like other Great Lakes native groups, so the zoo use buffalo guys for most of their needs. So let's find out what are those. So here it says they ate buffalo meat. And number two, they use the skins to make teepees, clothing and blankets. So teepees, so this is the native house of the native people. So this one guys is made from skin of buffalo. Of course, clothing and blankets to protect themselves from different kinds of weather. And the third one, so they made tools, needles, and arrowheads from the bones and horns of buffalo. So those are used guys for them to protect themselves or they're using those bones and horns for, I mean those arrowheads, they're using those from the bones and horns for them to create something guys, tools to protect them from different kinds of animals or wild animals and different kinds of people. Okay, so let's proceed. So I hope you will remember this. What are the importance of buffaloes to native people? Okay, now let's continue. Let's have a comprehension check. We have a very simple question. So how did guys the Sioux depend on the buffalo? Look at this picture and can you point out the item that made from buffalo. All right, so look at this picture. So this is teepee, right? Teepees. And these are made from skin of buffalo. So here are the answers. Okay, so you see this, they're drying this for them to use for their clothing or it could be dried meat, right? So there are different or there are several guys reasons why buffalo is very important to native people. Okay, now let's move on to the old Northwest. Okay, so European explorers and traders began traveling to the Central Plains in the 1600s. And there, they learned guys how to build their forts along the region's waterways so they could trade with the Native American people. So they are very resourceful. So imagine, and remember they are explorers. So they really have to try their best guys so that they can get into Central Plains and they could do some trading to Native American people. Then over the years, so different European countries actually fought wars over the control of the Central Plains and its resources. So as I've said, the Central Plains, they had a lot of different kinds of resources. So a lot of European settlers or explorers wanted to control the place. And in 1783, most of the region became the part of the United States. And the Northern Central Plains became known as the Northwest Territory. By the way, grade four, let me tell you, you might be confused why it's called Northwest and we're talking about the Midwest. So let me tell you that before the Northwest Territory guys got its name because it was Northwest of the states that existed at that time, okay? And here, look at the map. So let's have first the boundaries of the Northwest Territory. So we have three waterways here and we have Ohio River. We have the Mississippi River and the Great Lakes. So here you can see OH, which stands for Ohio, and here is the Ohio River. And the one extending here, guys, this is the Mississippi River, and the one on top here, the one in blue, 
these are the Great Lakes. And all these areas, all these states are the Northwest Territory. So let me tell you, what are those? The present day states that were part of the Northwest Territory. So those are Ohio, Indiana, then IL for Illinois, and we have Michigan here on top. Then we have Wisconsin and some parts of Minnesota. All right, so let's proceed to the next one. So before, thousands of settlers rushed to settle in the territories of fertile lands. So as I've said, so many people actually, guys, European people that really fight or fought to own something or to get something in this area of the Central Plains. So sometimes actually there were like two settlers claim the same piece of land and arguments broke out. So the United States leaders decided to control the settling of the Northwest Territory. And let's find out what are those. So first they sent workers to survey or measure the territory. So survey here means to measure the territory. And number two, the government divided the land guys into squares called townships. So each township guys was divided into 36 smaller sections. So after this section will be divided and it will be sold to settlers. So it's like to be fair, right? So it's not just like, oh, I see that piece of land. And before I heard great for that. People, before people don't have like the title of the land, right? So they just like, oh, I see that piece of land and they can just own it without really buying certain piece of properties. And the third one, the government guys passed the Northwest Ordinance in 1787. And when you see ordinance, it is a set of laws that describe how the territory's government would work. And it does also actually explain how new states will be formed there. Okay, so let's wrap up the lesson with this three questions here. So number one, how did the Midwest environment affect guys, the early people there? Number two, the Sioux and the other Native American groups of Midwest depended on blank to meet many of their needs. And number three, what waterways serve as the boundaries of the Northwest Territory? Okay, so let's find out the answers for you guys to remember the important key concept of this lesson. So first, it affected the kinds of houses people built, how they traveled, and how they got food. So as I said, so the key word here, guys, is adapt, right? So people learn how to build their houses according to the kind of place that they have or even the kind of food that they have there. So it depends on the availability, availability of their needs and number two of course it's obvious it's buffalo and number three so we have the great lakes the ohio river and the mississippi river all right so that's for today's lesson grade four i hope you learned something and let me know if you have some questions if you have some confusion in this lesson please let me know and stay safe and stay home for now Bye.